Rudolf Seilinger, welcome to Australia. I know it's not your first trip. Um, great to see you at the show. You're a very successful trainer, uh, Olympic team trainer for Denmark, a trainer of many Grand Prix horses. Tell me, your, your favourite horses that you've produced yourself? Oh, there are quite many and if I would pick out now only one, it would be a little bit unfair maybe. So it was several horses, each was individual, but uh, it's always fun to, to work with horses like, like this and hopefully we see in the future also a few more. That's great. You, you've had uh, a wonderful Hanoverian, Lavigno, uh, German uh, Carter. Um, Tell me, what horses do you have at home? What, what, what are you next to going to bring out? We also know, of course, you've produced many horses that other riders have been successful on. Um, two questions, but firstly, uh, what horses are at home? Okay, with the Hanoverian, you mean uh, Livigno. He was a few times in a World Cup final in the top three. Uh, I won the German championships with him. Uh, then I had a great Hanoverian mare like Vinica. Uh, I wrote Perron, but Perron is more well known with uh, Michelle Gibson. He won the bronze medal uh, in the Olympics in Atlanta. Uh, I trained Dondolo. I trained one of your best horses. Um, so, yeah, and for the future, I have in the moment uh, one Super Holsteiner, eight years old. Uh, he will be his first Grand Prix season this year. Uh, and uh, second, it's a uh, Baden-Württemberger, but he's half Drakena, half uh, Holsteiner. It's a nine-year-old, and both of these horses will have the first Grand Prix seasons this year, and they are from the potential uh, for me, absolutely international top horses also. But uh, I finished my competing career four years ago, only concentrating on training, coaching, and training horses at home. So these horses will be ridden from my young Danish berider I have. That's super, Rudolf. Um, tell me, do you know how many Grand Prix horses have you trained? Uh, have you ever stopped to count? No, I, did, I honestly, I didn't count, no, but uh, I think it's something between 30, 50. Yes, I, I would think so. Um, Rudolf uh, trained with Willy Schultheis and, and I think produced horses while he was still uh, with Willy Schultheis. Willy Schultheis being one of Germany's most successful ever trainers. Um, Rudolf, you're, you're here, Lone Jorgensen. Um, you work with the Danish team. Um, how long have you been with the Danish? Um, 15 years now and I think I am in the moment the oldest, not the oldest trainer by years, but the oldest trainer with one team in one uh, in one period together so um, and it's quite fun to to work for a longer time and not only for a period of four years as a coach uh, for, a, for a national team about then you really can also influence basics in the country and you can uh, help like the education from the riders on to the top sport you see the, also if i'm not a junior trainer you can see uh, what's going on in these classes and can help and then on the end you see uh, like what we have done in denmark now when i think back we I got the Danish team 97 and they have been last at the European Championships there. And the last 10 years we are always between place number three at Olympics, between three and six. And so we are really in the top class in the, in the world. And this with a continuity and I think it's, the breeding is good, the riding is good, so it looks also good for the future. Fantastic. Uh, Princess Natalie uh, of Denmark uh, is well known here in Australia. Um, she's been a, a successful member of that Danish team. Uh, Andreas Helkstrand, particularly with the wonderful grey mare Maginet. I know many other horses, but, but this was fantastic at a World Championships in Aachen. You were involved in training this horse too? Yes, I followed this horse from five years on and I also rode her a lot of times and okay that was a special mare yes absolutely uh, and I wish Andreas to get on a second one like this again uh, yeah but that's some highlights in her career like to see Martinet in, in the uh, freestyle in Aachen. Rudolf you're a master at the Piaf and Passage you're a master at the collection building the strength in the horse um, Matinee, an example, but you've had many horses with wonderful Piaf Passage. I know you're running the master class here. You're going to be talking about the German training scale. Um, forward, straightness, <laughs> strength, collection. 
self-courage. Um, is there an area that, that you, you've been here, I know, just a few hours, but is there an area that you find yourself working on particularly? Uh, you also said a lot of important big points. Um, so uh, first, all the basics have to be to be there, and also uh, what we want is uh, from natural elastic, supple horses, supple, smooth riders. Only in the combination it's possible to keep a horse elastic. And um, I also must say, a few hours I'm here. I was here 12 years back and not the last 12 years but before very often and I must say if I see on the warming up it developed a lot yeah so uh, also riding and, and also the horses here uh, also if you see this 16 or 20 horses in a Grand Prix class uh, that's quite good for, for Australia and I think it's they made a big step forward also the last 10 years um, but still you always have to see the whole the whole picture together and uh, what I see in a lot of higher education education horses is uh, then they are getting things lost like this what i say basic uh, elasticity or supplement uh, about the train as a riders are focused too much on on the movements uh, focus too much making no mistakes and lose a lot of really things we would like to see in a in a test or also during a training and for me it's very important to keep horses absolutely motivated yeah, that's one thing but it's not it's not so easy but uh, that's a kind of uh, timing of the aids plus understanding the horse understanding why the horse can't do it now or why why is what going wrong so all this have to be together it's not only the the riding as a as a athlete it's also a lot of mental things where you have to put in as a trainer or as a rider your reputation, certainly you're a master horseman, having kept many horses strong uh, right through their careers. Um, the happy athlete is something that we all strive to to produce in the dressage sport. And I must say, as a judge, it's something we're always looking for. Um, I, I know it's something that is a priority for you. Um, it, would you, uh, you know, how, how the difficulty with happy is, how do we define it? How, how, what do you think uh, defines the, the happy horse? Yeah, <laughs> the happy horse, or I call it more the, the motivated horse, but it's the same. Um, first of all, it's, a, it's also a question of which horse selected for the, for the top sport. About if we have some horses, they are just not able to. And some riders also try to get these horses to the top sport, uh, but then you see what we don't want to see, what you say as a judge. You see a horse, he's maybe doing the movements, but only about as a super strong rider in the on top of the horse and it looks not not great or if we have horses we would like as top riders which have this motivation or all this happiness but maybe they are for a lot of riders which are not good enough too sharp too hot then you also see horses which are not going through the test and you can say it looks happy so um, it have to come the combination the combination together but then also in the training you can do uh, with your horses too little then horses go unhappy you can make too much that's even worse maybe but uh, you so you have to find with the right experience the exactly point how much a horse wants to work how far you can go in the training you have to go up to the to the limit sometimes in the training otherwise you can't reach a higher point but if you if you feel it was maybe too much for a day then you have to make two three steps backwards for the next week weeks and that helps you to make two three four steps forward again and um, that takes a lot of lot of experience and also the rider must be happy otherwise if you see riders which are only thinking on getting the next higher mark and uh, fighting fighting for this too much and be maybe tight or aggressive then the horse will also for sure not be happy and not will develop in the in the right way Rudolf Seiling, thank you so much. Horse selection, timing, horsemanship, um, and also the happy rider. Thank you so much. We're really looking forward to the masterclass. Thank you. Thanks.